Welcome, everyone, to another broadcast from the Yadkin Valley Baptist Church in Adventist, North Carolina. This is Brother Ronnie, the pastor, speaking, and I thank you for being with us uh, on this Wednesday night, and I hope you've had a good day, and hope your night will continue to be good as well. Uh, we're going to be back in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 tonight. Uh, we started a message last week uh, on the thought, Why is the Church Glorious? And uh, we want to go back and read those text verses in Ephesians chapter 5. And, uh, and beginning in verse 25, read about three verses, and uh, then we'll go on to the next uh, part of the message. But before we do that, uh, let's uh, bow our heads to the Lord in just a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time and privilege we have to share a message again tonight. Now I pray, Father, that you'll take the message. May it be used for your honor and glory. Deal with every heart under the sound of our voice. Meet every need and save any that might be lost that's listening tonight. And be with those that are sick and suffering and those that's lost loved ones of late. I pray for their comfort and their strength. And uh, just be with us again tonight and help us in a special way. And remove all Satan's hindrances. And whatever's done, may you be glorified and honored. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. As I said, we're going to be back here in Ephesians chapter 5 tonight and talking on the thought, why is the church glorious? Now, again, in Ephesians 5, if you'd like to follow along with us, begin in verse 25. The Bible said, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That Now here's what I want you to get. Verse 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. So here uh, he's talking about his church. And the church I mentioned last week is, is the uh the body of believers, uh, it's the body of Christ. Christ is the head. Um, the church is referred to as the bride of Christ. And he is the um, the groom. And also uh, it is the considered the building of the Lord. The building of the Lord. And so um, the church is very important in our life. But certainly it is important in, in, in the Lord's view of you and I tonight. Uh, tonight, I want to go a little bit further with this. Last week, we talked about uh, it's glorious. The church is glorious because of its founder. And we discussed that um, last week for a while and how that the Lord uh, is the head of the church. We find that in Acts chapter 1. And um, he uh, even told Peter that upon himself, the rock, he would build his church and the uh, gates of hell would not prevail against it. So it's glorious tonight because of its founder. And then number two, the second thing I want to uh, talk to you about tonight is it is glorious because of family. Because of family. Uh, if you back up a page or two in Ephesians uh, tonight in uh, chapter 3, and notice what uh, the Bible tells us here in chapter 3, and uh, we'll go down to verse number 14. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 14. Paul says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The whole family in heaven and earth is named. So the church is glorious because, number two, family. Um you and I that are saved, we're part of the family of God. And we, as believers, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And um, God is our Father. And we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. We're part of the family of God. There's a song up there that says, I'm glad, I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. And what a great family to be a part of. Now we have our our uh, earthly families and our flesh and blood families, and they are important to us. And, and thank God for our, our uh, immediate families. 
But, uh, but we that are saved, we have even a larger, much larger family than our uh, blood brothers and sisters and parents and cousins and all like that. We have a uh, family in heaven and family on earth. Those that are still here that are saved, they are part uh, of our family and those that's going on to be with the Lord. He said the things um, uh, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The church is glorious because of it's a family. Uh, we are part of the family of God. If you look with me in the book of Hebrews chapter 2, and uh, we'll expound a little bit more on that uh, about the family. Here in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 11, the Bible says, For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Now think about that. The Lord is not ashamed to call us brethren. And when it speaks of brethren here, it's not leaving out you ladies. Uh, you know, it's talking about all of us, brothers and sisters in Christ. Whether you're male or female, if you're saved by the grace of God, you are a part of the family of God. You're a child of the Lord. We're children of God. Uh, male and female, it doesn't matter. We're all important. We all are part of his family. And the Bible says he's not ashamed to call us brethren. In other words, he's not ashamed to call you a brother or sister. You know, we refer to one another Christians many times as brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so. And how true that is if a person is saved. Because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are part of that great family of God. And the Lord is not ashamed to call us brethren. Now, that is a real blessing. God's not ashamed of you. Uh, and it's not a shame for me. But the problem is, uh, if we'll be honest, sometimes we fall and sin and we, we become ashamed of the Lord. And he tells us uh, plainly in the Bible, he said, if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. We shouldn't be uh, embarrassed or ashamed to be called the child of God. It's a privilege. It's an honor uh, to be part of the family of God. So the church is glorious because of family, the family of God. Let's look a little further into the family. Let's look in Psalms 103 tonight, if you will, in Psalms uh, 103. And uh, there's about, uh, well, five, six verses here I'd like to share with you in Psalms uh, Division 103, beginning in verse number eight. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy to toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. So I'm talking about the church and why is it glorious? Well, because of family. God uh, as merciful to us, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those that fear him. I'm glad that we can be a part of the family of God. It's so important to, to have family in this life, um, but even more important to be a part of the family of God. And thank God it's all because God pitied us and God had mercy upon us. You know, these verses says he's not dealt with us after our sins or rewarded us according to our sins and iniquity. Uh, as a heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Uh, as you think about it, you, you get out in the daytime or and you see a, a jet way up in the sky and you see at night the stars and the planets and 
you know, and the moon, and you, you look up there and you see all those uh, heavenly uh, planets and stars and and you know they just they're they're in place. God's keeping them in place, and it, you know God stood out on nothing and um, made everything. And if you think about the, the Earth and how it uh, rotates on its axis and how it revolves around the sun, and you know it's not held by cables or wires or strings. It's just held up there by the power of God. Uh, God said, as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards us, uh, them that fear him. When we become a child of God, we become a part of his family. I mean, just think about how how great his mercy is. Uh, we're on this earth and look up into heaven and see those uh, twinkling uh, stars and the planets and the moon that far, far away. And um, But God said, that's, his, his mercy is greater beyond that. To, to you and I that fear him, you and I that are saved tonight, we make up the family of God. And God, as the Father pities his children, God pities us. God is think, uh, 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 thinking of us, and we are important to God. Uh, you know, God could get along just fine without me and you. Uh, he always has eternity past. He always will. But we cannot get along without God. He can get along without us, but we cannot get along without him. And thank God that he pities us and he remembers, as I read there uh, in verse 14, for he knoweth our frame. He knows what we're made of. He knows how frail we are. He remembereth that we are dust. Thank God he loves us and we are important to him. We, even though we're weak and even though we are, are frail and um we, we sin and we come short of the glory of God every day. But God pities us. Why? Why is that? Well, once we are saved, we belong to God. We're His. The Bible said we are bought with a price. Uh, and, and God has, has purchased us back through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus so loved us. The Bible said He so loved the world. Now, when it says uh, in John three sixteen that for God so loved the world... It's not talking about the planet. It's talking about mankind. It's talking about the people that are on the earth in the world. And he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is not willing, the Bible said, that any perish. God wants all people saved. The Bible said God commands all men everywhere, every person, to repent. God wants everybody to be in his family. So the church is glorious because of the family. With uh, that thought still in mind, I want to turn now to the book of Acts chapter 2 for a verse here in Acts chapter 2. And um, we'll read, uh, I think, just one verse here in verse 47. The Bible said, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I'm glad God adds to his church. And God wants uh, everyone, as I said, saved. God wants the church to grow and, 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 and with new, new uh, converts. Yeah, we, we like to see people come to church and join the church. And that's so important to do that and be faithful and support a church. That is a great thing to do. It's what God wants us to do. But then God wants the church to be added uh, by souls being saved. Now, we can't save them, uh, but God can. We can try to get them under the sound of the gospel, invite them to church, and pray for them when they're there, pray for them when they're not there, that they'll get saved. And, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of like Paul mentioned. He said, one sows and one waters, but God gives the increase. We do our part to try to get people in church under the sound of the gospel, and the word of God is sharpened any two-edged sword, and the word of God can convict them, show them that they're lost, and then if they'll accept Jesus, they'll be saved, and guess what? They become part of the family of God, and they become part of this glorious church uh, that Jesus gave himself for, gave his life, that he might have this uh, glorious church without spot and without wrinkle, 
And uh, he said, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. So if you're saved, the Lord loves you. And if you're not saved, God still loves you too. And God wants you saved. But when you get saved, you, you become part. You're birthed into the family of God. Jesus said you must be born again. So those that are saved are born again, born into the family of God, become a child, a son or daughter of God, and they become part of the glorious church. Are you a part of that glorious church tonight? Are you part of it? You say, well, I hope I am. I'm a member of a church. But no, that's not what we're talking about. Have you truly trusted Christ and been saved by the grace of God? If you have, then you are a part of the glorious church. Why is the church glorious? Well, it's glorious because of the founder who, who began it, who started it. And it's glorious uh, because of its family. We'll stop right there tonight. We'll carry on with the next point next Wednesday night as we uh, continue to talk about why is the church glorious. All right, uh, let's bow our heads for a final prayer at this time. Father, we thank you for this uh, night you've given us, the blessings to be able to share another message. And Lord, thy church is glorious, not because anything we've done, but because Jesus gave his life's blood and, and that he purchased the church and purchased the believers. And thank God it's glorious because all because of what Jesus has done. So Father, bless each one tonight that's been watching, and I pray that you'll meet every need. And whatever's done, may you be glorified and honored. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us again tonight. I hope that you can come and be with us in our service at the Yadkin Valley Baptist Church, located on the Yadkin Valley Road in Davie County, Advance, uh, North Carolina. Uh, the uh, uh, address is 1324 Yadkin Valley Road. We'll begin our service Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And then at 11.15, we go live on YouTube. We'd love to have you come be a part uh, of, of our service. But if, if you can't do that, I hope you can tune in uh, by way of YouTube. And also, there's a link that you can watch uh, on Facebook as well uh, on Sunday morning. So thank you for being with us tonight. And until next time, this is Brother Ronnie Craddock, the pastor of Yakin Valley Baptist Church, saying thank you for being with us tonight. And goodbye. May God bless you.